This is my Commodore 1084 S monitor. I pulled out of storage recently to work with my VIC-20 computer. This is about 26 years old. It's been in storage with all my old computers for a while. It still works, but it has a few issues. The color's off a little bit, which can be corrected with the hue adjustment here. Um, also, you can't tell on this video probably, but the color's faded along the side here. I think the screen needs to be degaussed. Using an old CRT monitor like this certainly gives you the full retro computing experience, but there are a couple of problems with continuing to use it. One is if I'm recording a video like this, there's a constant rolling flicker. Uh, one of the other problems is that whenever I have it on, my daughter complains that the sound is annoying. She doesn't like to be in the same room with it. Probably the flyback transformer just because of its age is louder than it used to be when it was new and kids ears are a lot more sensitive to those high pitched frequencies. I have a few old 4x3 LCD monitors down in the garage but of course none of them are going to accept a composite video input so I started looking around for a converter. The first thing I found was this uh, composite to BGA converter on Amazon. It's an Amazon choice and it had mostly favorable reviews. It was only 22 bucks so I decided to give it a try. Let's see what's in the package. Power adapter. VGA cable. Composite cable. Best video cable. Instruction manual. And the box itself. This is a lot smaller than I expected it to be. Turning on the VIC. That's something. Ew. I don't know how well you can tell from here, but uh, apparently the interlace is not syncing up right. There are some buttons here. There's the uh, input AVS video or BGA. There's an aspect ratio, a mode, picture in picture, menu, and uh, picture mode bright, soft, normal. So on the menu, we have uh, brightness, contrast, saturation, hue, language. That's about it. Picture mode. The buttons here are mislabeled. This button is labeled mode, this button is labeled PIP, they're reversed. This is the button that switches the screen resolution. Here's what it looks like on a little bit more modern monitor. This is a widescreen monitor. There is a button here to change the aspect ratio. And if you push it, it just shrinks it down to a letterbox. But it doesn't uh, fix the screen stretch, it just makes it worse. I still have this interlacing problem, so I don't know if the unit is defective or if it just doesn't handle interlace signals well. So this is a bust. It's either going to go back or uh, get used for something else. Since that VGA converter turned out to be crap, I decided to order this one. This is an HDMI converter. And I'm hoping I can still use this with my monitor uh, by converting the HDMI signal to DVI. Comes with a manual in several languages, basically two pages, some package contents, some rudimentary instructions. This is Neotech. This was recommended by Amazon. It's got uh, composite audio input, HDMI output, selectable 720p or 1080, and 5-volt input. Fortunately, it comes with a USB cable to power it, which I'm pretty sure I should be able to uh, power off the USB port on the monitor. Let's give it a shot. So I have the HDMI cable plugged into a DVI adapter, and DVI does not carry audio. I'm going to have to find a way to adapt the uh, phone jack 
for the uh, sound bar and uh, connect up power using the USB port. So we've got the adapter I've got in there. Plug the USB power in here. Power it onto the monitor and we've got power to the converter. Plug in the composite video and turn on the VIC. See what happens. Nice. It works. That's actually not terrible. There's some artifacts there, but it is upscaling. It's uh, legible, usable. I just got to get the audio connected. Checking for any lag. I'm not feeling any lag. Left, right, fire button. An input lag that I can sense. One thing to note on my monitor in particular, putting the switch to 1080p results in the monitor out of range. This has a max resolution of 1280 by 1024, so 720 is a uh, resolution that works here and it's not native resolution so there's a bit of blockiness and dithering going on but overall I think it's usable one of the things I actually don't like about it is you can see on the sides here that it doesn't quite fill the width of the screen vertically it's good but horizontally it's not and this thing's designed to output a TV signal not a computer signal and it may just be running into the horizontal resolution limit of 720p.